You know that, uh, so, oh, thank you. Uh, yes, we're dedicating the shiur. Elu Nishmat, Debora Fege Bat Shemuel. Ora Debora Bat Shemuel. Esther Rebka Bat Abraham and Monica Bat Fani. Menachem Ender Ben Al-Hanan. You know that uh, a lot of people, um, especially when you speak about emunah and how important is the concept of trusting in HaKadosh Baruch Hu, so the question comes up regarding Hishtadlut. Hishtadlut is my effort, right? That a person has to know one thing is emunah on Hashem, the second thing is to do my effort. People cannot say, okay, I trust on HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and I do nothing. There is no such concept. But the Olam doesn't, doesn't manage the world with miracles. But the Olam manages the, the world according to nature. I want to tell you something. There was a rabbi, his name was the Hazonish. Very big rabbi. Hazonish came up to one of the Avrechim that he had, and he told him, I need, I need from you a favor. I want to send you to to United States. I don't know which which state exactly. I want you to travel there and to collect money for a certain issue that uh, that it was in uh, by the rabbi. So the Avrech says, "For sure, Rab, whatever you send me to, I'll go." He took a, a ticket and he traveled to New York. He gets to New York. Going from one office to another, back then he was able to raise less than ten dollars. Less than ten dollars. He shows that, uh, you know, he's trying here, he's trying there. He goes to shul, yeah. Baruch Hashem, the things change. Yeah, but back then, the concept of giving tzedakah wasn't so common. Anyway, so this fellow, after a few. Th- a few days that he's in New York, he decides, halas, you have to go back. He came back and he would feel so embarrassed that he decided not to go to the house of the Hazonish. The Hazonish realized that he came back, called him up. This guy comes to the Hazonish, you know, half uh, shaking, what the Hazonish is going to yell at him. And just entered to the house of the Hazonish. And the rabbi looks at him. Tzadik! Hazaku Baruch! Baruch Hashem, thanks to you, I get the admiration. To scale a mitzvot. To scale a mitzvot. Yeah, but what donation if I didn't get even $10? This is what I'm talking about. Thanks to you, a donor sent me, I don't remember the amount, very large amount of money for, uh, for the project that, uh, that we're doing. Thanks to me? Where is the donor from? He's from Paris. From pa- I, I didn't know to Paris. I went to New York. So the Hazanish explained to him. And he told him like this. There is an obligation for each one of us to do his to, to put our effort. But be careful not to trust in the Ishtadlut. Ishtadlut is part of my obligation to give to Bore Olam an option to give me the Parnasah that I need. But Chaz Shalom to believe that my Ishtadlut is the thing that is going to bring me the money. You're doing the Ishtadlut, the money can come from another side, from another place. My obligation is to do something. Don't sit down and do nothing. Do something. But at the same time, doing whatever I'm doing, Having the emunah and the trust the Borei Olam is going to give me whatever I need. And it doesn't matter from which side. It doesn't matter if it is this side, this way, or that way. And I told you, I, can, I would not like to enter in that area right now, but I can tell you stories, stories of people that they were saying, listen, I was trusting that, this, that the money is going to come from this side. And Mina Shamaim, the money came from different areas. But that's the point of Ishtadlut. Rabotai, the Shlah HaKadosh writes down, always before Hanukkah, or, uh, always before Hanukkah, Parashat Vayeshev will be written. There is a certain connection in between this week's Parashah and Hanukkah. This is one of the Remazim, one of the hints. It's written in the Parashah 
Vayikim is shlosh chodeshim. After three months, the story with Yehuda and Tamar, they told Yehuda that Tamar, she's pregnant. And says Yehuda, Hotziua v'tisaref. Take her out to burn. Says the Shlach Kadosh, even though it's a tough story that we're going to speak about it in a few minutes. But says the Shlach Kadosh, Vahikem yishlosh chodashim, three months, Tishre, Hashvan, Kislev. At that time, Otsiwa, take out your Hanukkiah, with the Saref and light it out. There is a Ramazim that there, there is a certain connection in between this parasha and Hanukkah. But Rabotai, if we were talking about Yehuda, so there is a Rashi, very interesting Rashi, and we have to understand it. Rashi writes that after the story of selling Yosef, the Torah cuts the story in the middle. And it gives me totally another story that I have nothing to do. About Yehuda going out and the whole story with, with his, uh, with his uh, uh, daughter-in-law. Rashi writes, you know why Yehuda, the story of Yehuda came in in the middle of the settling of Yosef? This is not Midrashim, this is Rashi. Rashi is the most basic pshat in the pasuk. Says Rashi, to teach you that the brothers of Yosef, the, uh, the brothers of Yehuda, told Yehuda to get out of, the, of their house. They said, they saw how the father was crying so much about Yosef. They went to Yehuda and they told him, Yehuda, it's your fault. Whatever is happening to our father Yaakov, it's your fault. You told us to sell Yosef. If, if you were telling us, to bring him back to Yaakov, who were doing it. it. Was your fault that you try, you know, to, to hide the whole situation by bringing the, the closing of, your, of yourself with the, with the blood and everything? Get out of here. We don't want to see you anymore. And Rabotai, yeah, uh, Yehuda was sent out and he lost his, 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 uh, his hashivut, his importance in the family. Yehuda was the head. He lost it. Tells us the Torah, listen up, Yehuda leaves his house and they have the whole story with his, uh, with his uh, daughter-in-law. What was the end of the story? Yehuda, uh, he said, yeah, Tzadikah Mimeni, she was right and I was the wrong and don't kill her. And all the, all the Mepharshim are, are saying about Yehuda, Hazaku Baruch Yehuda, you deserve an applause. Why? Because you control yourself and you didn't embarrass her. Now, what do you imagine? Imagine a guy that steals a bank. And after he steals a bank, he goes to the police and he says, I admit, I stole it. Are we going to give him a price? What price? Say, say, thing that, say, say a thing that, that we're not going to put you in jail, Habibi. Which price? Comes Yehuda, he does a terrible action, and because he admits, that the action that he did was not nice. Hazaku Baruch Yehuda, because of you, you're going to have your grandchildren are going to be, are going to be the future kings of Israel. And Mashiach is going to come thanks to you. For what? Do you think that's normal? But Rabotai, this is amazing, amazing. Chachamim are teaching us that, Ye that Yehuda made a sin and Yehuda fixed the sin, Mida Kenegel Mida. What was the main sin of Yehuda? Selling Yosef, taking the garments, and try to, you know, to look that everything is fine. There is no big deal. You know, happened to be that Yosef was uh, eaten by an animal. We didn't sell it. Yehuda did a terrible sin by Yosef. You know how Yehuda fixed it? Yehuda fixed it with Tamar. Tamar was pulled out to be killed, right? And they told uh, and Tamar told Yehuda Hakerna, recognize if this is if this belongs to you or not. Yehuda recognized it, and he was able at that mo uh, at that point to say one of the two options, or to say, you know what? Let me check one second. I have to speak with my uh, with the bedin. I have to speak with the Bedini. We'll go to the Bedini. We'll come back. The rabbis decided to... 
cancel the, the, you know, the case, and the case is uh, over. Halas, not to say any word. Like, there is a certain reason why, but we cannot say to the people what's the reason, but the din decided not to punish Tamara. That was one option. But the Uda went above his nature. You know what he did? He decided that if he did a mistake, he have to, he have to face it. And he have to, to, to say it out clear. What he says, so Yehuda said, they come many, out loud. He said to everybody, yes, she is right. And I was, a, I was the man, and she's pregnant because of me. It was my fault. Now, but I, that was the tikkun of the avon that Yehuda did with Yosef. By Yosef, you hide the avera that he did. You hide the selling. In this action that he did, he did exactly the opposite. He was ready to take the responsibility and to announce it. How many times happened to us that we do an action and when we realize it was a mistake, and I'm not talking about terrible things, let's talk about the simple things in the house with the wife, not you, not me, right, with the wife. What happened? There is a whole... There is a whole conversation that the conversation brings to a, to a mahloket. And then the wife shows you that you were wrong. Uh -huh, big time you were wrong. And now you have two options. Or to admit it like a man. And to say, you know what, you're right and I'm sorry. And I did a mistake in this. Or to say, ah, you don't understand me, fine. Let, let's leave it this way. And what? At least you put yourself clean. Like you're not a... That's the message. You want to be a leader? You want to be the head of Am Yisrael? Only at the moment that you're ready to admit. Only at the moment that you're ready to take the responsibility about the actions that you did. Let me just uh, tell you. There was a man that... Uh, that he was asked to, from a, a friend of him, do me a favor and take me something, yeah, to another country. I don't know what was it exactly, an item to another country. This guy took the item, put it in his luggage, and, they fly, and he flight. When he got to the destination, he opens up the luggage, the item is not there. What's the other thing you have to pay or not? He's not responsible, right? I'm doing to you a favor. That's stolen. I'm not responsible. The problem was that this guy said, let me, let me call up the, the airline. And the airline said, sir, whatever you put in the luggage was an, uh, an electronic device. Electronic device, you have to know that the airline is not being responsible. Yeah, and whatever happened, it's your fault and hannas. So now you realize that really it's not a regulation of Mechainam, right? It's a negligent. And a negligent, you have to pay for whatever, uh, right? The guy had a whole internal fight. On one side, I did a favor to my friend, and I will have to pay. Yeah, and it's a lot of money. From another side, it's a nice. What should I do? And I'm talking about few thousands, few thousands of dollars. This guy decided, you know what? I'm going to go with the truth. He called him up and he told him, listen, I want to tell you that uh, the item that he gave me, they stole it from me. I want to tell you that really, behemet, behemet, was, I was neg negligent. Why? Because according to the airline, I wasn't supposed to put this item inside the luggage. So I'm ready to pay for it. I will tell you this guy <coughs> was about to pay him. The other guy said, you know what, give me a few days. I'm going to tell you exactly the amount. A few days pass. He called him up, the owner of the item. And he tells him, listen, I want to tell you one thing. Forget about the item, you're not going to pay anything. But I, I just was checking those days 
and I have an unbelievable job to offer to you. Unbelievable business. You're going to gain a lot of money. Okay? Let's do business together. And Be'ezat Hashem. So this is what happened. He told him, listen, you show me that in such a situation where you had the option to keep it quiet. No one, I wasn't about to ask you. You were telling me it was stolen. It was stolen. You were ready to go with the truth and to take responsibility. I need a guy, a, a guy like you for my business. This guy got parnasa only because the power of the truth. Rabotai, how many times you think that you're going to gain by Shekhar? There is no gaining with Shekhar. No gaining. The gaining amiti is whenever you take responsibility on your hands. And that's Yehuda. Yehuda was able to become from someone that was thrown from his family to get the opposite and to become Melech Israel for generations until Mashiach will come from him only because he was ready to take responsibility into his hands. <laughs> so Be'ezat Hashem, by taking this message to our life, Be'ezat Hashem, we're going to see Beracha and Be'ezat Hashem Yishua to all of us. Amen, amen.